Huh. All right, rain, 50 degree temp. You know what that means, right guys? Tournament weekend. Just arrived, Don Pedro Reservoir, Yakabas stop number three. It's Friday evening. It's gonna be a little bit different tournament because uh, I'm going solo for this one. The fellas, the rest of the crew, for various reasons, couldn't make this one. So I am here all alone. I'm gonna probably just grab a campsite, sleep in the truck tonight, wake up tomorrow, go fish Don Pedro blind. The main reason I'm doing it, I mean, of course it's a tournament, so I love fishing tournaments, but the biggest reason I am participating participating in this tournament this weekend is because I just found out the other day after two events for the Akabas 2024 season granted it's still pretty early on in the season actually leading AOY so that's awesome it's still early a lot can happen there's still a ton of tournaments left but as the Akabas tournament series usually go it's cumulative points throughout the entire year every tournament's a certain amount of points and you can drop your worst finish and I am actually going on a pretty big trip I won't uh, give any spoilers away but I'm going on a pretty big trip in May and I will be missing Yakabas stop number four at McClure. So that will automatically be my worst finish or my drop. So coming here was a must if I want to have any chance at AOY. Again, still super early on in the season, but at least with this tournament right here, I'll kind of know whether I have a true shot if we place top 10 or, you know, maybe I bomb and then I guess don't really have to worry about the AOY deal. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the overview for this tournament. I've been looking at the weather all week. And of course the one blip of rain was right now with six o'clock 20 percent chance of rain here i guess we hit that 20 percenter clearly didn't pack or dress for rain i guess i'll just wait for this rain to stop and get my campsite make my way there and settle in for a little uh truck camping tonight Okay, a little break from the rain. I think we got a little bit more coming in, but here's what it is. We're here solo camping, just like the old days, right? Before I had friends. <laughs> Cheers. No, but on uh, all seriousness, this is how I used to do uh, the tournaments out here before I met the crew. Just uh, would show up, get a campsite, or even in the parking lot, pretty much pack my truck to sleep in comfortably for one night, have all my gear ready. Kayak is, of course, in the back of the truck. Yeah, just chill, have a beer, got some food packed. It's simple, it's real simple. I think it would take you probably three or four years to go back to those videos where I was doing this a little bit more on a consistent basis, not just tournaments, but just going places and sleeping the night before. Nothing has really changed. It's essentially the same setup, but it gets the job done. Yeah, figure uh, since we don't have the amazing host or the tours that we'd normally do with the cabins, the Airbnbs, everything that we stay in, I guess I'll be your host today and I'll give you a little tour of my truck camping setup. It won't take long, I promise you, but give you guys an idea as to how I pack and try to be as comfortable as possible for these trips. So set you down. We'll take you guys. All right, so here we are in the uh, Fleming Meadows campground. Picked at site number 46, overlooking the water. Shoot, I could probably even hop down there and make a few casts. I won't, but could if I wanted to. Lake looks beautiful right now. See our rain clouds moving that way. Do have a few more in the distance coming over us, so I'm gonna have to hurry this up, but yep, kayak is in the back. Going with the 10.5 again. Reason I'm not bringing the 12 yet is just because this is easier to transport for the time being. And I really like the smaller platform right now, especially because I think I'm gonna be fishing real shallow. So I think it just kind of suits this situation appropriately anyways. But let's move on to the, the tour of the truck. So back here, we've got the kitchen. Just brought a bag with some snacks, potato chips. Got some uh, beef sticks in there, some extra coffee, just in case. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, really nothing. I'm only staying here one night. Here is my refrigerator. I've got some trusty Sierra Nevadas in there. Did pack all pale ale except one. This guy, brand new, cosmic little thing, hazy double IPA. If I'm feeling frisky tonight, I might uh, take a swig of that. We'll keep that in there for now. 
course, I got all my gear in the back here, which I'll show you in a minute when we get to the other side. All the gear that'll go in the kayak for tomorrow. All the rods prepped, ready, baits ready to go. I do have some window shades down here. If I want a little more privacy, if I want to, I've got shades that'll actually go on every single one of these windows and black out the truck completely. Um, I've also got these guys right here. I've got four of them. I just made these, took some screen material, cut them to size for all the windows, added some magnets, some sticky magnets, and uh, these are nice little window screens. Probably won't need them right now because it won't be hot tonight. Mosquitoes and bugs won't be an issue, but maybe just for some airflow, I'll open a window and put one of these screens on. Should be a relatively comfortable night to sleep in the truck. Uh, I got a towel down here, plastic bag, I don't know why. All right, moving on. So here we got the uh, master bedroom. I'm definitely not as good as Mike at doing this, but I'm trying. So this is where I'm going to be sleeping. Nice thing about this truck, and geez, I've had this truck since 2014, I want to say. I don't even know if they make them like this anymore, but that center console actually flips up. So it's really easy to just kind of sprawl out in the front seat here. And, uh, you know, got a comforter, a couple of pillows. It's really not that bad. It really does work for a night of sleeping. Right here, maybe one of the most important components that I've had for years been doing it for years or used to do it for years and still doing it this uh portable massive battery pack that can power pretty much anything so my point being is it's powering little mr coffee right down there it's already prepped i already prepped all this stuff at home it's got coffee in it water so literally in the morning i'll turn this on plug this in press brew and she'll be brewing i don't even actually have to get out of my truck i can just wake up right here roll to my right and turn it on so pretty cool got my coffee thermos i always pack pretty dang well i would say i have a checklist i'm a checklist person i you know double triple check everything before i leave but i would say by far the one item that i always forget whether we're truck camping airbnb and cabining whatever is a dang coffee thermos i should just keep one in my truck at all times so glad i brought that this is uh the other refrigerator cooler this has my food my dinner tonight uh we'll be eating a jersey mike sub uh, i think it was the number four mike's way of course and i've got another one i don't know why i just got two and a little bit of a salad for a lunch tomorrow on the water healthy lunch tomorrow and uh yeah some room to spare in there but again just one night of camping you don't really need much a uh, box of tissues for whatever hey let's go to the other side here all right so the other side of the sleeping quarters really not much I've got, uh, I don't know, some drone stuff. I might throw the drone up tonight. Got some portable battery packs to charge the phone. I could actually charge it using that big battery pack. It's not even a battery pack. It's a power station. Could use it doing that, but I don't really need to. In the summer, I'll actually use that to plug in like a fan or something, have that running all night, phone. I mean, it's got a lot of power. I've actually used that when I've lost power at my house to power on lamps, the computer, whatever. So it's a really nice thing to have in uh, just-in-case situations. And then, of course, truck camping. Really nothing else up here. Go to the other side of the back and uh yeah got my backpack here just clothes toiletries a couple of miscellaneous items the rest of my gear that'll be going in the kayak tomorrow brought an anchor just in case we do a little bed fishing i don't know don pedro i haven't been here in a few years so who knows what'll be going on and i brought a foldable chair even though right down there looks like there is a nice bench so that is pretty much the truck tour camping setup it's uh it's easy i told you it's real simple for a night even two nights it really works not too bad this place is actually pretty cool 40 bucks you know it is what it is basically just paying to park here but you can see if you did have a tent or something you could go set up a tent or you know something down there man what a gorgeous site gorgeous location down p right there and uh, hopefully tomorrow we can catch uh, five big old bass they're somewhere out there yeah all right, so that was the uh, the tour, guys. I don't know, not much. I tell you, it's weird. I've been spoiled. I've been used to hanging out with the fellas for these trips. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I did a tournament out here solo. It's been a minute. It is what it is. It's a tournament I'm excited for. Don Pedro, I actually haven't been here, like I mentioned, I think three years, I want to say, was the last time I was here. I know there's big fish in here. I know there's quality fish in here. It is the time of year where probably, I mean, knock on wood, we should be catching numbers. So it could be a deal where you're just looking for a bigger bite or maybe two or three bigger bites. Seven o'clock, thank we're just about to get some more rain yeah there's not much else to do i'm just gonna kick back relax just hang out we'll get a good night's sleep for sure won't be staying up till midnight playing poker i know that we'll begin stop number three for yakabass 2024 don pedro so other than that i will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning
film and here we go 7:34. launch at 7 30 34 minute run start fishing at 7 30 eight hour tournament ahead of us last cast 3 30 gotta be in off the water checked out at tourney x by four o'clock yeah i think this is my first time fishing here since 2021 so basically just going in blind but you know what that's okay some of my better pre-fish days have been just going in blind and then doesn't translate into tournament day so let's kind of feel this lake out 65 degree water temp i'm sure there's fish in all phases of the spawn we'll definitely go looking later I'm just gonna go fishing have fun Well, almost 8.30, hour into the tournament. No bites yet, no signs. Forgot to mention, when we launched this morning, we got, uh, I think, 99 people in this tournament. About 96 went north or south, and about three of us, including myself, went straight across <laughs> into the mid-lake section. I say, that's either a really good thing or a really bad thing. There we go. Micro. I ain't gonna cut it. 12 inch minimum. Hell, it's a start. Baby. Oh, see one right there. I only saw a little K1. I don't know if that one's on a bed or what, though. Yeah, definitely some remnant beds here. Kind of what I was hoping to maybe do a little looking today and find a potential big one. Just saw like a I don't know, 15, 16 inch largemouth. Like a 17 inch, actually. Oh, it's just gonna be really spooky. Yeah, fish is not really that locked. It's pretty spooky, so. I'm not going to waste too much time on those types, uh, at least we know there's some largemouth bedding back here. Yeah, waypoint, maybe come visit him later, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. we'll uh, make our way back to him potentially later. Swim in the net for me? That's nice of you. A nice one. Yeah, I thought for sure that'd be a largey. Whatever. That's a good one right there. Wouldn't mind having five of these fellas. Yeah, that's a quality fish right there. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Oof, 17 incher. It's first fish to start. Jeez. Good limit fish for sure. 
Man, good lemon fish. Can't say for sure yet, but I want to say these fish are on bed and we're putting it on their bed. Good fish right here. Heck yeah. Ones I will not complain about. No sir. I gotta shout out some of you guys in the comments. It's the uh, Tulloch video, a couple videos ago. Kept losing fish at Tulloch. A lot of you guys said maybe just tighten your drag up more and I did that today. I mean, it's pretty tight. And so far it's worked out. I mean, these fish can have really hard mouths, so it's getting better hook penetration. Could be crucial in actually landing these fish and having them pinned well. So thank you to you guys out there who said to uh, tighten the drag down. So far it seems to have worked. Oh, big old large mouth right there. Dang it. I don't think that one's even gonna be 12. Uh, no. Negative. Just saw another large mouth though. Think he was on a bed? Not sure. I didn't mark all these fish just in case. I need some kickers later. The large mouth looked pretty good. Like 17 plus inches. The ones I've seen, those two. They're all in the same spots too. These little like pockets within the cove where there's some grass leading down to the bank and there's just that the correct bottom for them to spawn on. up and checked out the boat. We'll gauge his behavior. He's looking really spooky though, like the other one. 16, 17 inch fish though. Maybe worth fishing for? I don't know. Might as well just keep blind casting for these spots, right? One of my biggest tournament mistakes that I consistently make over the years is spending way too much time on bed fish. I'm gonna try not to make that mistake this time. All right, let's get out of here. Maybe 15. Number three, we'll take them. Yeah, that tighter drag, I think, is the difference. That one was pinned good. God, that was, uh, dang it, dang it, dang it. That felt like where one of those large mouths should be. Hey, par for the course this year. Son of a gun, that, I, that was a good one. How did he break me? Oh no, there he is. That's why it broke me, he's in a tree. Uh, you know what? Eh, 15, 16 inch fish. There's a bush right down there. That's why I got broke. All right. Little keeper, little keeper. Gotta measure them all though. 
never know when five will be hard to come by. Gotta start with five. What I like is I've gone through these two like creek arms next to each other and it's been the same pattern. Kind of the last quarter of it has fish. So there's a handful more around this area. It's been reproducible. The same thing's been happening in these two arms, so I think I can reproduce this. I think. Jeez. You were supposed to be like a 18 inch largemouth, dude. Any rocks back here? There's gotta be some largemouth on that or somewhere back there. There's largemouth. Yeah. Just like we thought there'd be a largemouth. Jump. Come on, baby. Oh, it's a spotty. Man, I thought you were largemouth. Man, this one's gonna be barely 12. Little fella. But she's number five. Largemouth back here. Not dainty spots. All the ingredients back here point to largemouth. Oh yeah. Well, let's keep fishing. As long as we're getting bit. Numbers game. Catch as many as we can today in high percentage areas and hopefully just get lucky and land on a big one. Those big fish are just like crucial for these tournaments. You have to have the big ones. It's like a school of micro spots back here. I'd love to catch a giant. I mean, we'd all love to catch a giant, but this early on, so much weight off the shoulders with a big fish in the first half of a tournament day. Man. I'm getting smaller. strong. And what do I got to get rid of? I got to get rid of a 13, I think. Well, I'll just measure them anyways. I don't know if this is even going to come. I should be paying attention to what I have. What is our smallest fish? 13.75. Oh, so this one will cull. It's barely 14. That's what I got now. Got to get rid of a 14 and a 14.25. Seems reasonable. Actually, I need to get rid of those two plus the 15 incher, or whatever that is, 15 and change. Not just get rid of them, I got to get rid of them with 18 inch fish and like a 21. I know that's a lot to ask, but it's just what it's going to take. I think with the way the bite is, the amount of people fishing this, it's going to be a 90 inch bag that'll win this. 90 inches, so you gotta have an average of a 19 inch fish. Sounds crazy, but that's where those big ones come into play and offset those 17 inches, make everything an average of 19. Yeah, gotta get rid of a 14.25, negative. Hmm. Water back in this creek. 
that's the thing any cast i could land on 21 22 inch fish Just keep plugging away definitely time consuming though doing this from a kayak because i'm literally having to run from oops, fish right below me literally having to run basically at the end of a creek or an arm to the next one so i have to go all the way around the point and just fish the productive stuff which is seemingly that last quarter of each one so i don't know i might try some other stuff but this just seems like the right thing to do right now like this Loaded up over here. My little guy. Dang it. Oh, I am really surprised we haven't caught a largemouth yet. Surprised and disappointed. Eleven twenty six. Tournament's half over. Let's check the leaderboard. All right, first place right now, eighty four and a quarter. Well, top four have over eighty. I've actually submitted my fish today. I'm not sandbagging, saving it till the end, just because I figure you're gonna catch so many fish. I want to get confused at the end, but seventy seven and a half right now for us. Ninth place out of ninety nine. Of course, probably a lot of people who haven't submitted yet. Yeah. Wow, a lot of limits already. A lot of limits, people are catching them. Some good ones in the mix, 16 to 18 inch fish. Yeah, just uh, using that leaderboard to gauge the fishing overall and it's exactly how I thought it would be because that's how it is for us, it's good. Fish are biting, 15, 16 inch fish are probably gonna be the norm. So that 77 and change score for us is not gonna hold up to anything special. Feels like a large mouth. Yep, it is. He's gonna jump. Oh boy. Yeah, we need this one. Oh, it's not a giant, but it's one of the helpers. It's on that tree. There we go. See, that's why we need large mouth right there. They're just bigger. Just bigger. Yeah, I don't know if that one was on a bed though. Whatever, don't care. All right, there's a call. More of that, please. Please and thank you. So when I was doing my uh, research prior to this event this week, going in blind like I said, but definitely looked at uh, Google Maps and Google Earth and all that stuff to find a, a game plan in this section right here. You notice it kind of forks at the end and it has a bunch of these trees back here. That's that's what really drew me to this area. So this was originally the plan to come back here, but obviously I stopped a few coves short of it before we uh, made our way here and figured, you know, where there's wood, there should be some largemouth. Yep. Giant. Not giant. 17 incher. Oh, come here, dude. Yes. Here we go. Alright, this is the large mouth Kobe. Eh? Thank you, kind sir. Thank you, kind sir. It's a nice long one. Yeah, these are ones on the bed. I don't even think I could sight fish back here if I wanted to. It's like dirtier. All right, trending in the right direction. All 
All right, 17 and a quarter. Whew. That one scared me with all the jumping action. All right, what do we gotta get rid of now? Like a 15 and change, I believe. Something like that. Let's see what we need to do. Let's get rid of that 15 and change with like a 21 incher. It's getting greedy now, but the truth is what we need. this cove or cover new water catching those two largemouth back there was cool but can i do that again back there if i fish it thoroughly i don't know my gut is telling me to continue on keep covering water it's already 12 man these tournaments today especially i know i say this every time but today has gone by so fast three and a half hours more to fish probably just because we're getting consistent action the day's going so quick but man it just flies by Out kind of nice. Ooh, you got some some flight in you. Gotta get rid of a 15. It's a spotty. Spotty's like this dingier stuff. Oh, ooh, way better than I thought. Wow. Okay. Thank you, sir. What? I think I got ripped up on the spot here. Usually spots are real long. This one's all shoulders. All shoulders. Dude, it's like a large mouth. Ah, no complaints. It's a little call. I think that's 16, I'd say. I'll get you to touch 16 and a half. You're so close. I may have gotten them to touch. If not, whatever. Saw the log there. It's barely sticking out. Ooh, dang. It's not gonna call, but he's a good one. Gotta get rid of a shoot. Well, I gotta get rid of. I think I gotta get rid of that 16 and a half or 16 and a quarter, whatever it's assessed at. All right, 12:36. Let's cross over. Keep covering water. I've pretty much had two options. Cycle back through this entire side, cross over, explore some more stuff. Let's go with that one. All right, it was a good little run, about one o'clock. Chose the smaller of the two really big creek arms and wouldn't you know, went right to the back because I think that's where these fish are. Hopefully there's some big green ones back here. Got to get rid of a 16 and a half. And then we got two 16.75s. Got to get rid of. Your shoulders, where are you? I'll be back here somewhere. Well, this creek had nothing. Keep moving.
giant, but potentially could have helped. Same thing as the first large mouth we caught, kind of on a point. Oh yeah, let me goop that one up. I think that's a good sign though, at least. Maybe some better fish back here. Kinda sorta running out of time, only because I am really far from the ramp, like always. Like, really far. Last cast, last cast, last cast. Here it is. It's got to be the last one. 319. Even if we caught one, we'd have to measure it super fast and book it. No? No last minute heroics? 320. Gotta go. Alright, might even do the turn around, look around deal and say tough tournament or whatever. Or good tournament, but... Oh, I gotta get going. I've got a pretty good run back. It's gonna take me probably the entire 40 minutes. But guys, yeah, what can I say? Fun day. Fun day out here on Don Pedro. Caught a lot of fish, caught the numbers, just couldn't get that kicker. I mean, I found a couple of decent fish, a couple of decent areas, but you know, for no pre-fish and just winging it, I'll certainly take it. I think we'll be lucky to stay in the top 10, but if we do, I would uh, consider that a pretty good finish. As far as the angler of the year standings, that would keep us in the hunt, keep things interesting. So I'm gonna make my way back. We'll see how this stays ends up and I'll meet up with you guys afterwards and we'll review this thing. just finished up the awards man very consistent as far as the bite goes for a lot of people with the size those 17 plus inch fish today were just crucial getting that big bite too like we thought so it was a good day overall got ninth so i will certainly take it going in blind i mean catching fish all day granted pretty much all on a drop shot still a lot of fun i'll take it and just really all we were missing was that one big bite that kicker fish but a lot easier said than done but no it was a good day you know started out going towards an area that i looked at on the map this week a lot of timber a lot of wood over there figure this time of year maybe there'd be some largemouth spawning or maybe even post spawn over there ended up making that really long run when we took off i was like the only one that went that direction stopped a little shy of that saw some coves leading up to that area this time of year fish are probably in my opinion most of them are in like 10 foot or less so a lot of them bottom oriented whether they're on beds whether they're post spawn and you can't really go wrong with a little drop shot did notice that these coves off the main lake it was the back like 25 percent the very end which makes sense this time of year that's where i'd get my bites caught some nice spots to start filled out the limit with some smaller ones but it was really those ends of coves and little uh, pockets that had the congregation of fish and like i said i mean it was a great day catching a lot of fish catching numbers a lot of fun but uh, ended up finally making my way to that cove that i marked on the map as far as the game plan with all that wood yeah didn't set the world on fire but did end up catching two decent largemouth out of there so that definitely helped the score called up some inches and that was pretty much it the rest of the day which the last three hours i decided to continue to explore versus run through those same areas again which we talk about this all the time tournaments it's all about decision making especially in a kayak when you're so limited on how much water you can cover and instead of running through the stuff that i fished before which in retrospect i wish i had done that i went and covered new water across the lake i went up two real big creek arms they look really good on the map but yeah caught fish just nothing of size and didn't end up culling for the rest of the day ended up with 84 and a quarter respectable score did get a top 10 so as far as angler of the year goes yeah, it'll keep us in the top 10 for AOY I'm definitely not leading it anymore because there's a few guys absolutely crushing it this year but keeps things interesting yeah guys that is the video solo tournament it was weird not sure I like it that much but still had a good time still had a fun day out on the water so as always guys thank you for watching for coming along and I'll see you guys in the next one